Okay. Uh, hello all. I welcome you all to the next episode of Entrepreneur Speak series from ESL of IMT Gaziabad. Today with us we have Liquid founder Vivek Agarwal. Vivek, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. Now a quick introduction of Vivek. Vivek is majored in finance and business strategy from IIM Calcutta, 1993-95 batch. He then joined SRF Finance in investment banking function. Later, Vivek started a venture called eGurukul in 1998 that was pioneer in the field of e-learning in India. After a successful journey with eGurukul, he established Liquid in 2002 that focused on bringing the innovative learning solutions to corporate and legal enterprises. With this, I'll start with my first question here, Vivek, sir. Now, what is your story, sir? What made you switch from a corporate job into a startup world? I think at the time I, uh, so I have, uh, I think I've always, uh, looking back at it, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. My father was a small, as a small business in UP, and I think uh, that probably uh, inspired me or, or sort of uh, always put it in my mind that, you know, I have to be on my own. And then soon after I left Am Calcutta, I started, I joined a job, as you said. And I was there for a couple of years, but then the opportunity, then the internet had just started at that time. Uh, you know, this was 97, 98, when uh, uh, just two years after, uh, after the first Netscape browser had gone public and internet had really, Hotmail had just happened. So internet was really starting off. And uh, I've always had an attachment with education, being, you know, studied through several, uh, Academic institution like, like you guys, and uh, and that so that was always close to the heart. Um, I had been working. I started actually as a you know just as a consulting organization. I left my job, but as a process of that, we were also doing some. My partner and I we were doing some uh, teaching, part time teaching, uh, to earn our money, and uh, and that is what sort of when internet and education came together, you know, just like very bad. Okay. So, sir, uh, that brings me to another question that what exactly is liquid? I mean, we know that you started with eGurukul, then you uh, started liquid. So, how eLiquid is, uh, I mean, how liquid is different from eGurukul? So, eGurukul was focused more on the curriculum support and test prep markets, uh, the consumer markets in India. Mm -hmm. uh, we were providing CBSE and IIT and medical and all of those. Uh, coaching, online coaching, that was purely a self-study model. But as I built eGuru Pool, uh, I realized that, you know, a combination of online and uh, and teacher learning is probably the best method for learning. Pure online has its challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, in certain situations, uh, it works, but, you know, mostly a combination of trainer and, and student-led learning is what works best. And secondly, I had always had this uh, thing, you know, I grew up in a small town and uh, I, was, I was good at most subjects with my English would be. So I was sent off to a boarding school so that my English could improve. You know, that's what everybody said at home. And so, so that sort of gave me an insight into, you know, it stayed with me and it gave me insight into how many people are there in this country who are very bright and talented but lose out just because their English is uh, not so good. Right. So the combination of the blended model, the insight that I got from Hebrew, and I combined that with the early insight of opportunity in the English market, is what led me to create uh, Liquid English Edge, which is okay. what it is today. Great, great, sir. Uh, so that that's that's uh, starts another question, another debate here. So. Uh, many times it says that the ad tech uh, startups that were coming earlier were more B2B focused. And now we are seeing uh, ad tech startups more B2C focused, wherein a more uh, evolution is taking place on the product front. Now, with this changing culture, uh, do you think that the culture of home learning is round the corner or is it still too early to comment? So see, I mean, uh, the current culture of uh, the online learning I, I think it was picking up uh, in the last few years, online learning has been picking up, self-learning people are using, you know, with, with mobile phones and, and penetration of PCs, it has started. 
what this crisis has done is accelerated that trend okay so i think uh, we would have uh, we would have achieved these levels of penetration maybe 3 4 5 years down the line which we've achieved already now some of that will stick as sort of things open up you know or not some of it will be clawed back by the traditional methods but not all of it so it's so the, i think this covid is a great opportunity for ed tech companies in the sense that it's accelerated the the online adoption and now you have thousands of you know school teachers and millions of children who had their first experience online and now they're used to it so it'll be much easier for them to going forward adapt to adapt to this technology and that bodes very well for for the industry okay uh, so this uh, this is another another thing uh, that uh, there's a huge debate between valuation and uh, uh, and the profits so i uh, so we have read that uh, after you sold e gurukul uh, you used the proceeds to start uh, your liquid and then uh, your company was profitable in the first year itself so uh, how how do you take on this debate between profits and e uh, valuation especially to the young entrepreneurs uh, who want to enter the field yeah i think that's a this is a very good question and uh, i uh, you know i start by uh, i start by having learned you know and lost most of my hair in the, through my learning process i can say to most entrepreneurs now that you see money is an outcome it's not the end of the thing as uh, i like to quote that movie three idiots where amir khan says you know kamya uh, kabil bano kamyabi apne aap aayegi right so you become capable and successful change right so uh, there is no obvious uh, uh, so so i think the focus is to build a big business a successful strong business right uh, you need money to build that and for that valuations are important but to chase valuations for their own sake is where the uh, danger comes because you get caught in that rut and then your focus moves away from building the business and that's not sustainable in the uh, medium to long right uh so 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 you have said that money is important to build big businesses and now uh so there are a couple of government uh, policies that uh, came into the effect with chinese with uh, they you know uh, scrutinizing all the chinese money coming into into the atmosphere or into the ecosystem so how you see uh, going uh, forward from this that uh, the the startups in india would face uh, money problem or uh, or you know investment problem or something like this so i think see there is clearly a need for more money for startups in india i don't think there is any and uh, uh, and certainly you know any friction to any uh, capital will create will reduce that capital right i mean and chinese investor will be large investors so uh, that certainly to that point it will vary but there is a larger uh, larger national interest and uh, you know i would say we balance both having said that you know that's not the i but having said that i won't consider that as the biggest challenge okay. i think you know as startups we should uh, focus more on on consumer on value and i think if we do that enough money will come secondly there are a lot of our internal challenges in our country for startups you know the whole regulatory maze the babu dum the the very aggressive uh, government officials the you know constantly changing uh, rules and laws and so on and so forth so there is a, so those problems in my view are actually bigger than uh, than funding problems right so uh, first of all i'll i'll also congratulate you because uh, we we read that uh, liquid is expanding into foreign markets as well Uh, when you talk about america europe and asia and uh, opening new offices out there so uh, so when you are venturing into foreign markets and with your new portfolio as in uh, your english uh, english course into your portfolio now so how you see the growth of liquid and what what is your, what are your future plans i think see uh, if i look back at liquid uh, we've had uh, two three phases the first phase was when we started was well, internet right i mean so if you look at the first decade of the century roughly 1999 to about 2008 9 10 uh, was the inter- decade of the internet 
right? And where some, every company and including education company, the internet became a prime driver of growth and value. Uh, the second decade, uh, you know, starting from when uh, iPhone was launched in, uh, in 2007 or 8, uh, to now has been the decade of uh, mobile. Right? And uh, everything, everybody has gone mobile, everything, uh, you have to have a mobile charity. I think the next decade, roughly speaking, will be of AI. Right. Uh, and uh, that's where we are positioning uh, liquid and uh, English Edge to compete in. Uh, we've done over the past year and a half or so, we've done a lot of work on using data, analytics, and AI. We've in fact just released our first, or uh, releasing our first AI product uh, next week uh, using vocabulary to help uh, people, uh, you know, especially starting with the test prep market, people who study for you know, IELTS, a COCOL, or CAT, which you might have studied for, or GMAT, or GRE. Uh, so, so there's a vocabulary builder where we've used a uh, very established learning theory of urban having laws. Uh, so it's in a space repetition concept, which we've implemented through a linear programming uh, using ML and AI. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, that's the great model. So you use established uh, learning theories and you implement them through latest technology and create great learning for personalized learning experiences for the learners. And I think that's the future. And that's where we are positioning the uh, like go. Okay. Uh, sir, uh so you have more than more than 23 24 plus years of experience into into the startup ecosystem uh, anything anything in particular learnings or you want to give uh, to the budding entrepreneurs uh, who are in into very early stage of uh, of their journey i think the biggest uh, you know finding is uh, the biggest learning uh, it might sound a little uh, trivial but you know focus on the consumer focus on your customer I see, I meet a lot of young entrepreneurs uh, doing, uh, you know, more of the same thing. Everybody, so many people, I mean, they'll build some content and they'll say, we take it to schools. Schools is such a large market, right? Now, a school, while it's a school, while it's a large market, a large number of schools, but it's a, you know, I like to call it a graveyard of, of entrepreneurs because everybody thinks it's such a large market, and but it's very, very difficult to tackle that market, right? And I don't think entrepreneurs are looking at uh, enough, uh, are, not, are putting enough effort in seeing how their offerings are valuable to the consumer or the customer. So what happens uh, to a lot of entrepreneurs I mean, they build, a, they build content mm -hmm. and then they go into the market to sell. The, the middle part, the, you know, making the content, the offering work for the consumer, mm -hmm. right? That part is missing. I don't think uh, we are taking out as an industry time to see how our users are using the offering, how are they benefiting from it, uh, why will they pay for it, you know, those kind of questions, you know, the, the marketing thing, you know, the product marketing uh, thing uh, that you might call from a, from a management theory perspective, that is completely missing. And that is where uh, we find a lot of you know, same old solutions being repackaged, recycled by a lot of young entrepreneurs, right? Content, for example, in future, there's so much of free content available. Mm -hmm. So content is, a, is essential, but a small part of the solution. I think you need to think about technology, and I said, like I said, it's about AI, you need to think about, you know, making it work for the consumer, and so on and so forth. So that piece is missing. So you have to think harder, to think smarter. <laughs> in terms of why has it not worked for others? What, how do I bring in differentiation? How can I, um, my offering, you know, as Steve Jobs always said, it's not about doing better, it's about different, right? Because people have different needs, right? So how am I different? And I think if we can answer that very uh, convincingly, uh, we we have a great start. Right. Uh, uh, with this, with this, we come to an end of our, of our interview. Uh, thank you, Vivek, for joining us. Thank you for your wonderful insights. I'm sure it will motivate many, uh, many students like us uh, to to venture into this into this ecosystem. Uh, thank you, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye for now.